hello dear candidates welcome to bio classes online in the previous two videos i have given some important tips about how to qualify csir ugc net in life sciences and what are the various books which you need to follow for the csir ugc net life sciences exam if you have not watched those videos yet do watch them the link of the videos is in the description Dear candidates, today we are going to start the unit or module 8 that is Inheritance Biology from the syllabus of CSIR UGC Net Life Sciences. First, we will go through the theoretical part, then to the numerical part. Dear candidates, if you have not subscribed my channel that is Bioclasses Online yet, do subscribe now and press the bell icon so that you will remain updated with the bio classes online so without wasting time let us start first of all you must be aware about what is heredity variation and genetics as you know there is an old proverb that like begets like that is all living organisms tend to produce young ones like themselves for example human beings always gives birth only to a baby human beings and dogs always give birth only to a baby dogs not any other animal or we can say the mango seed forms only a mango plant not any other plant Thus we can say here that the offspring is resemble to their parents. But why? Because the characters of the parents have been transferred or transmitted from to the offspring. That is why the offspring resembles to the parent. That is why the offspring is just like as the parent. So this transmission of the genetic characters from the parents to the offspring is called as the heredity. While as the inheritance is the process, is the process by which these characters, these genetic characters or traits are passed from parents to offspring or from one generation to the another generation. Now coming to what is the variation, as we know all the sexually reproducing organisms in all the sexually reproducing organisms the two the offsprings are not the exact copies to their parents or the two offsprings of the same parent are not exact copies of each other they differ each other in their certain characters there ha there is a differences between the offspring and the parent or between the offsprings of the same parent or between the individuals of the same species and this these differences between the individuals of the same species is called as the variation so variation is the degree of differences in the progeny or offspring and between the progeny and the parents coming to the genetics now genetics is one of the branch of biology which deals with the heredity and variation as we know now the what is heredity and the variation and the branch of biology which deals with these heredity and the variation is called as the genetics the term genetics was given by William Bateson in 1906 this is important point and there are mainly the three branches of the genetics one is called the transmission genetics also called as classical genetics or Mendelian genetics and the second one is molecular genetics and the third one is the popular population genetics the transmission genetics deals with the transmission of the genes from one generation to the next generation or from parents to the offspring so we can say that branch of genetics which deals with the transmission of the genes from one generation to the next generation or from parents to the offspring so how these genes are transmitted from parents to offspring that branch of bio, uh, genetics is called as the transmission genetics while as when we 
are dealing with the structure and function of the genes at molecular level that branch of bio genetics is called as the molecular genetics so the molecular genetics is the branch of genetics which deals with the structure and function of the genes at the molecular level as we know genes are the segments of the dna so when we are dealing with the structure and function of the dna that branch is called as the molecular genetics and the third branch of the genetics which is called as the population genetics this branch that is the population genetics deals with the applications of the mendel's principles and and all other principles of the genetics whether these are the applications of the uh, sorry the principles of the transmission genetics or tra uh, principles of the molecular genetics when these uh, when uh, the applications of these mendel's laws and the other principles of the genetics uh, uh, to the entire population of the organism that branch of the genetics which deals with the application what are the applications whatsoever the applications of mendel's laws are or any other other principles of the genetics to the entire population not an to an indi particular individual it deals with the entire population of an organisms within a particular area and when you are dealing with these applications of the Mendel's laws and other principles of the genetics to the entire population not to a single individual that branch is called as that branch of the ge genetics is called as the population genetics so uh, now coming to the pre mendelian ideas about inheritance what are the pre mendelian ideas about inheritance which also which are also called as the theories of blending inheritance number of uh, viewpoints were put forward prior to the mendel to explain the transmission of characters from parents to the offsprings before the, or prior to the mendelian principles or mendelian genetics a number of ideas number of points were put forward and these together are all those points all those ideas are Uh, called as the pre mendelian ideas about the inheritance they are often they are often called as the theories of blending inheritance these pre mendelian ideas about inheritance how the tra traits are transmitted from parents to offspring what were the ideas before the mendel about the process of, about the inheritance those are called as the pre mendelian and um, mendelian ideas about inheritance they are also called as the theories of the blending inheritance why because these pre mendelian ideas or these pre mendelian theories believe that the characters of the parents blended or got mixed during their transmission to the offspring according to these pre mendelian ideas the characters when the characters get transmitted from parents to the offspring the characters of both the parents that is the male and the female get mixed together uh, during their uh, during their transmission to the offspring and results in the formation of an offspring having an intermediate characters of both the parents that is the male as well as the female so different theories have been different theories pre mendelian theories or the theories of blending inheritance were proposed uh, from time to time the most important theories of th uh, blending inheritance are the moist vapor theory fluid theory Uh, preformation theory particulate theory theory of pangenesis theory of continuity of germ plasm now coming to the first theory the first theory that is the moist vapor theory this theory was proposed by pythagoras and according to this theory during coitus or intercourse moist vapors from all the parts of the male's body gave rise to a similar body in the female's womb so we can say according to this theory some moist vapors arise from all the parts of the male's body gave rise to the similar body in the but in the female's womb or in the female's uterus next theory is 
द फ्लूड थ्योरी विच वॉज प्रपोजड बाय द एरेस्टोटल एंड एरेस्टोटल सजेस्टेड दैट द मेल सीमन वॉज हाईली प्यूरीफाइड ब्लड अकॉर्डिंग टू एरेस्टोटल द मेल सीमन वॉज नथिंग इट वॉज द प्यूरीफाइड ब्लड वाइल एज द फीमेल सीमन वॉज द फीमेल मेनेस्ट्रल फ्लूड सो मेनेस्ट्रल फ्लूड ऑफ द फीमेल मेनेस्ट्रल फ्लूड वॉज द फीमेल सीमन and this female semen was not as pure as the male semen so two points are here according to the aristotle the purified blood of male acts as a male semen while as the menstrual fluid of female acts as a female semen and the female semen is not as pure as the male semen and these two fluids that is the male semen that is the purified blood or the menstrual fluids they combine ju- combine during the coitus or inter uh, coitus or intercourse and this female the female sex provided the inert fluid for the formation of the embryo Uh, while as the male semen gave form as form that is the shape as well as the vitality to the embryo so in simple terms that according to the fluid theory proposed by aristotle male semen was highly purified blood and the female female's menstrual fluid was the female semen which is not as pure as the male semen and these two fluids combined during the coitus or intercourse female provided inert fluid for the formation of the embryo and the male semen gave form and vitality to the embryo next theory which was proposed by swemerdam and this theory is called the pre formation theory as the name indicates pre formation pre formation already existing already present pre means which is already a Uh, and formation means which is already present so this theory pre formation theory proposed is proposed was proposed by swemerdam and according to this theory that organism is already present in the parent but it is present in in the parent's sperm or egg according to this theory that the organisms are present already in the parent sperm as male gametes and as well as in the female gametes but they are in the form of a miniature form or a small form home semerdam called as humunculus so humunculus are the preformed organisms in the sperm or eggs in the miniature form in the parents and Uh, according to this theory the role of fertilization is only to stimulate the already existing organism for it to it is growth that is according to this theory organisms are already present organisms are already present that is they are already preformed in they are already present in the sperm they are already preformed in the sperm that is the male gametes and the female that is female gametes or eggs in the miniature form or in the small form called as the humunculus while as the role of fertilization the fertilization is required only to stimulate it is growth to stimulate the growth of the humunculus so the next theory is particulate theory which was proposed by mapretus according to this theory that heredity or the transmission of characters from parents to offsprings is controlled by a minute particles which come from all parts of the body to the reproductive organ so according to this theory according to the particulate theory a pre blend a particulate theory proposed by mapretus that the heredity that is the transmission of characters from parents to offspring is controlled by a minute particles which come from all parts of the body from all parts of the body some minute particles come to the reproductive organs and individual is an individual is formed when the particles from the male and the female combine so according to this theory heredity is controlled by a minute particles which come from all parts of the body to the both in case of females as well as in males 
to the reproductive organs while as in case of males they will come from all parts of the body to the um, male uh, gamete while as in the case of the female, uh, females they come with, they will come from all parts of the body to, and reach to the reproductive organ that is the mainly in case of the egg and an individual is formed when there is the when there is the fertilization or there is the intercourse and these inter, during this intercourse these particles which are now present in the reproductive organs they combine with each other and results in the formation of a new of spring so this is all about the particulate theory now coming to the next theory which was proposed by the darwin and the theory is called as uh, the theory of pangenesis and according to this theory that every cell of the body produces a tiny particle here again it is the role of the tiny particles but here the name of the particles has been given by darwin as gemule or pangene according to darwin or darwin suggested that the every cell of the body produces certain tiny small particles whom he called as the gemule or pangene and this pangene contains both the parental characters as well as the variations and all the gemules or pangenes of the body cells collected in the gametes as we know in the these gamete these pangenes or gemule gemules they get collected in the gametes that is the male gamete as well as the female gametes and are passed on to the zygote and these when they are passed to the gamete that the male gamete and the female gamete the male gamete and the female gamete fuse with each other during the fertilization and results in the formation of the zygote so these tiny particles that is the gemules or the pangene finally reach to the zygote and once they reach to the zygote these tiny particles these gemules these uh, pangenes guide the growth of the different parts of the embryo uh, to form an offspring from zygote as we know now that from zygote we get an offspring but according to the darwin that the this when once these gemules reach to the zygote they they will guide its they will guide its growth results in the formation of a fully fledged offspring so it is this was all about the theory of pangenesis and the last theory which was proposed the last theory of um, blending theory of inheritance uh, is called as the theory of continuity of germ plasm which was proposed by weismann and as we know that there are two types of the cells one one type of cells which do not take part in the reproduction are called the somatic cells and while as the second type of cells which take part in the reproduction are called the germ cells and the protoplasm present in the somatic cells is called as somatoplasm while as the protoplasm present in the germ cells is called as the uh, is called as the germ plasm so according to this theory proposed by the wise man that the it is the germ plasm that is the protoplasm of the germ cells which is passed from parents to offspring or which is passed from one generation to the next generation and we can say that it is the protoplasm which is immortal not immortal it is more immortal and is passed from one parent to the parents to the offspring or from one generation to the next next generation while as the somatoplasm somatoplasm that is the protoplasm of the somatic cells that forms as we know that forms the body is mortal not immortal it is mortal somatoplasm is mortal and perishes and vanishes when the organism dies so according to simple sense in simple sense that according to the theory of continuity of germ plasm proposed by weismann that the germ plasm is immortal and is passed from parents to offspring or from one generation to the next generation while as the somatoplasm is mortal and does not pass from parents to the offspring but perishes or vanishes when the organism dies so now we will uh, come to the another main important point what are the basis of the heredity what are the basis of the heredity mainly as we know that mendel uh, 
proposed that inheritance is controlled by a pure germinal units or factors now called as the genes and as in future you will come to know that it was the mandel who proposed that that the process of uh, transmission of characters from parents to offspring that is the inheritance is controlled by a pure germinal units whom mandel called as the factors and now they are called the genes and the term gene was coined by johnson and it is these genes or factors which get transferred from one generation to the next generation and the factors when the factors or the genes are transferred from one generation to the next generation or from parents to offspring is called as the physical basis of heredity so in simple sense and or simple terms that it is the genes or the mendelian factors which are passed from parents to the offspring and thus are physical basis of the heredity while as as we know that the genes or the factors are passed from one generation to the next generation or from one cell to the next uh, one cell to the it is uh, to one, from one cell to its daughter cell as a components of chromosome as we know now we are aware about that the genes are the genes are the parts of the dna or segments of the dna and dna together constitute a thread like structures which are called as the chromosomes and every organism have a specific number of chromosomes as we know the human beings have 23 pairs of the chromosomes and when it is in actual sense that the chromosomes are passed from the parents to offspring or from one generation to the next generation or from one cell to the daughter cell and it is called as the chromosomal basis of heredity when you take into consideration the genes or the factors for the uh, fact, genes or factors then it is called as the physical basis of heredity but when us you take into consideration the chromosomes then it is called as the chromosomal basis of inheritance now the another one is called as the chemical basis of heredity and the as we know genetic genetic material present in the chromosome is the dna deoxyribonucleic acid and the genes are itself the segments of the dna those segments are called those segments of the dna which are, act as the genes those are called the cistrons cistrons are the functional units of the dna who which act as the genes and thus we can say here that it is the chemical that is the dna deoxyribonucleic acid genes are the segments of the dna it is not in actual sense the in strict sense if you will go it is chromosomes which get passed it is genes which get passed but genes are the segments of the dna and segments of the dna whom we called the cistrons and thus therefore dna as is acts as the chemical basis of the heredity genes act as the physical basis of heredity chromosomes act as the chromosomal basis of heredity while as the dna acts as the dna is the chemical basis of heredity maybe some questions may be asked he from here now we will come to know about one of the famous scientist or the founder of the genetics whom we called as the grigor john mendel and he is the he is known as the father of genetics because he was the first to demonstrate the mechanism of transmission of characters from one generation to the other it was the grigor john mendel who first demonstrated the mechanism of the heredity as well as the variation and thus is the founder of the uh, genetics or we can say he is he is uh, considered known as the father of genetics and the grigor john mendel was uh, born in 1899 and he grew up on a small farm in his own drof uh, in north morova uh, which is which is uh, which was uh, then a part of astrea and uh, mendel uh, completed his study for the priesthood in an in one of the uh, monastery called as augustinian monastery of st thomas and he was ordained 
in 1847 soon after vanasi become the priest in the saint agustinian monastery of the saint thomas he uh, uh, mendel worked for a short time there as a, as a substitute teacher substitute teacher uh, so in order to continue that role that is in order to continue the role of the teacher he needed to obtain a teaching lessons from the government so but unfortunately or surprise surprisingly he failed the listening exams due to the poor answers in the areas of physics and the natural history so therefore then mendel enrolled himself at the university of vienna to expand his knowledge in these two areas that is in the math in the mm, physics and the natural history so he enrolled himself because he failed in the listening exam so he enrolled himself at the university of vienna these points are very important for csr net or any other or icmr net and so mendel enrolled himself in the university of vienna to expand the knowledge in these two areas that is in the physics and the natural history and the next point we regarding the mendel in 90 sorry 1853 mendel returned to the monastery of saint thomas date is important that is 1853 once he enrolled himself in the university of vienna from vienna university of vienna he uh returned back to the monastery of saint thomas uh, where he continued to teach now he uh, continued to teach physics and natural history and also conduct try to conduct an independent research and where he conducted the research in 90 sorry 1856 mendel began his historic studies in the on the pea plant pisum setum very important point in 1856 grigor john mendel began his historic studies on my pea plant botanical name of pea plants is pisum setum where he uh, in the monastery garden of monastery the garden of monastery of saint thomas saint thomas where he, he began his historic studies in which year 1856 and for 8 years he grew and crossed thousands of the pea plants on the small 100 1101 into 223 feet plot so there was a plot or there was a garden which whose measuring 111 feet into 20 23 feet of an area and he grew there the and grew and crossed the thousands of the pea plants for at for 8 years and whatsoever he get what, what the crosses he did he kept the accurate records because he was now a uh, having an hold on the mathematics that was one of the reason and so thus we can say he kept meticulously accurate records and finally after completing the uh, uh, growing and crossing these pea plants he published his whatsoever he found he published his work in uh, entitled the name of the work he gave is the experiments on the plant hybrids experiments on the plant hybrid is the name of the work given by the um, grigor john mendel to his work and he published that work in 1866 in a journal in a journal the proceedings of the brun society of natural history natural history so the name of the work that is experiments on plant hybrid is very important and the name of the journal in which he published his work uh, is very important that is the proceedings of the brun society of natural history but unfortunately unfortunately this paper the paper that entitled that is experiments on the plant hybrids was largely ignored by the scientists at that 
time at the time once in that is in the 1860s the scientists ignored the work which was carried out by the mandel possibly because there were mainly the two reasons are main two reasons are considered possibly of its title because its title was not so attractive so that the other scientists would have been got attracted towards its uh, uh, this uh, um, title or because it was published in a rather obscure journal because the main main main, re, main reason behind the that the paper was paper was ignored was because it was published in a local journal uh, local journal the name of the journal was the proceedings of the brun society of natural history so this uh, so it was ignored and prior to his death before the death of the mandel mandel died in 80 so mandel died prior to the his death in 1884 mandel himself reflected mandel himself said that my scientific work has brought me a great deal of satisfaction mandel himself said that i am very much satisfied with my work whatsoever the work i have done and i am convinced that it will be appreciated before long by the whole world and he himself reflected that the work which the mandel carried out that the mandel he carried out will be appreciated by the whole world before long before long by the and this these were the word these were the words of the mandel in 1884 prior to his death and the, the same thing happens and no doubt it remains uh, ignored the work of the mandel was ignored for um, uh, around 16 years in 80 in 19 Hundred, the work of the Mendel was independently rediscovered by the three biologists, and the three biologists who independently discovered the work of the Mendel were the Hugo de Vries of Holland, Carol Corners of Germany, Erich von Tesmark of Austria, and this is also important point here for the CSR net. life sciences who what were named the scientists who were who rediscovered the work of the mandel and these were the hugo de vries but they hugo de vries of holland carol corners of germany erich von tesmark of austria and they dis- rediscovered the work of the mandel in 1900 but independently Uh, subscribe and share bio classes online by ashok khusain and in the next part we will continue to um, this uh, inherit uh, continue the topics of the inheritance biology thank you